Hi, hello, happy Sabbath and Shabbat Shalom. Okay, well, um, as you can see, my little onion seedlings are pretty happy. I'm not sure, but I think I may want to. I don't know what I want to do with them, to be honest with you. I may just leave them here until they get up to size. Um, they probably need to be spread out from each other. I may repot them. I may put them outside in the summer. Probably should. Alright. Um, on to spider plants. And this one's even flowering already. Look at that. It's already, already flowering. Good deal. So, since these things are part of the asparagus family, as it turns out, they're tougher than nails. There are all sorts of them coming right back up out of the ground, and they're just coming right through and rocking and rolling. The ones that are floating, I do need to go ahead and repot somehow, somewhere. And I would like to be able to barter with somebody else to help me with that, since it's a real trial for me to do that kind of thing. But anyhow, um, like give them a, a hundred of them or something like that for their time to help me repot them. Either way, they're still alive. They're just living off of, well, water, like air plants. Anyhow, the, uh, so these two, obviously, they're doing fine because they weren't burned by the frost. The pineapples, they're not doing super great, but they're not dying because they, they were hurt but not killed. Um, I don't know if these buds are opening up on these avocado trees. This one here got hit pretty hard, but... Um, I'm gonna leave it there and see if it comes back. Of course, obviously the cactus long gone and forgotten. Now over here, though, over here, um, which ones was it? This one here is coming back from the root, and this one is coming back from the root. I get an idea. See this one very well. I can literally use the camera as my zoom. It looks like that one might be coming back from the root. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. It won't focus at that range. I'm about to, if it is alive, I'll break it off if I'm not careful. Yeah, I can't tell if that's alive or not, but. Uh, Again, I've got a new seed in here, I've got a new seed in here, but that one's been dead for over a year. And basically the only reason for doing what I'm doing right now is just to kind of get the... Make a mess of the floor. Basically it's just to get the um, body out of the way of the, the image so I can hopefully see what's going on down below. I am going to still put these out in the. Let me zoom back out because I'm not sure. Where I'm, at. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom. I'm gonna go ahead and put all these back out um, in case they are alive, because the heat will make them more prone to sprout. So some of them are already coming back. I get an idea that the rest, some of the rest might come back. Some might not. I don't know. My uh, next celery experiment is rooting. Doesn't mean it'll survive, but it is rooting. I got myself a, uh, it's a uh, triple operation. It's a pH, moisture balance, and UV sunlight exposure meter, and it doesn't use batteries. My, I think I didn't, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but my, I have a name now for this, uh, I call it my spindly pear. It is a normal prickly pear just being raised inside a greenhouse. And it makes it spindly for the most part. So I've decided to call it spindly pear. And it looks pretty cool to me because it's kind of a one of a kind. Even though it is genetically, if you put it outside, it just become a very, very normal, in the most literal sense of the term, normal cactus. Because that's what it is. Uh, it's that one is down here because it started growing roots, so I decided to put it in some soil. 
So anyhow, this thing is just a normal prickly pear in the presence of whatever extra carbon dioxide or whatever in the greenhouse is growing thin and wiry, but it's growing. Seems to be pretty happy in here. And of course, our uh, massive forest of, uh, uh, massive, but anyhow, a little forest of grove of, uh, um, my brain went dead. Um, aloe vera is doing okay and needs to be repotted so I can spread them out. And that cactus over there has not yet fully died. These up here are still doing okay, I guess. You can see they're the cascade of uh, vines. And uh, of course this cactus is doing okay. That was supposed to be a green dragon and oh, it seems to be out of water. Well, I watered that thing recently. It might not do well to be dry. <laughs> Okay, well, it's got some water now, so it should be all right, if it's going to make it. It may be dead, all right, man, just died a long time ago. I wouldn't know. All right, um, these are hopefully going to be put out here pretty soon. Uh, it's about time to get past the frost. These mom got from her work, they are essentially throwaways. And we're going to go ahead and use them to pot plants in. So these will become little planters. And um, the amaryllis has gone back to one leaf after sitting all winter long with four. And uh, so it's doing okay. The little, whatever this thing is called, seems to be doing okay. I can never remember what that thing's called. Um, probably need some water. It's got some water now. Okay, good deal. Um, so those will all go outside. A lot of these out here, uh, everything in these pots over here will go outside. And the avocados will and, and go outside too. Uh, over here. Um, since I don't remember if I reported last night. But anyhow, our newest babies. There we go. There's gold. Silver is probably, there's silver. Okay, silver's a boy, gold's a girl. What are you doing, gold? You jumping on the back of your mama's butt like you're trying to do something you're not supposed to be able to do. Anyhow, so Ginger's putting up with them. She's got a nice, hefty udder. She's doing pretty well as far as that. She's looking a little bony, but then they tend to after they birth and start producing milk. It just, unfortunately, that's what happens is when they're milk producing, they get bony. She did dinner, dinner. She's doing it have the camera anyhow so uh, I think gold thinks she's a boy or something I don't know maybe she's just jumping around uh, fields still growing we, we haven't had too much super cold weather out here the Bermuda is still growing and there's Caroline and there's chestnut and there's sugar and there's mocha and they're all sitting over here hopefully they're all pregnant I know Caroline's pregnant, Sugar's pregnant, and Mocha's pregnant. I don't think Chestnut is necessarily, but could be. Sam over here might be pregnant, too. She she might be pregnant. She's kind of looking that way, hopefully. And, of course, these boys are obviously boys, so they're not pregnant. But uh, Hans and Franz and Hansel and Junior, yes. And then, of course, getting up here. Again... We need some more rain so we can get more grass. We'll get whatever rain we're given. They're eating the grass though since it's growing up better. Yeah, the breeze blew through here and knocked the door over. It does it sometimes. Kind of like a little wind tunnel to some extent. And then, um, of course, the tiger lilies. They are uh, getting along here pretty good. As is some of the wild lettuce. I put up some sheet metal here to try to defer them from getting in there and getting to the tiger lilies. I don't know how well it's going to work. The uh, dewberries are flowering. We got all started this week. These things have fully cycled through pretty much. Of course, the frost accelerated it. And I'm kind of glad because while the flowers are pretty, I don't need lots of seeds sprouting all over the place on me. 
these things get pretty uh, rambunctious. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, the grapevines are opening up. The grapevines are all, uh, hopefully produce a really beautiful harvest this year. We shall see what we shall see though. Uh, orange bacoons are everywhere this year. I mean, there are more of them this year than like five years before combined. So, the orange bacoons are on the rise. Now this isn't my property now over here, at least not at the moment. We might be able to get it someday. There's one there. There's three of them right there. These little onion grasses too. They're over here too. There's four of them over here. One, two, three, four. And a little blue onion grass. They're around here now and then. And uh, there's one right here I walked past. Right here. And uh, he's a baby. Oh, uh, here's some more. Blue onion grass and some more verbena. Verbena has made its way over here too. And uh, now I got to do something about these over here. I have a couple of seedling lilacs, and they're dangerously close to the fence. And if we got this property, I would either have to negate this fence, or I'd have to. Do something anyhow to protect them because otherwise the goats will eat them. They love lilac. They'll devour them in a hurry. Okay, there's another orange cocoon right there. There's one over there. Again, these weren't here in past years. There's one over here. And then another one right there. So, they're, uh, and there's one over there. And one over there. So they're just all over the place. Kind of can't even keep track of them all. They're just swarms of them now. I mean, admittedly, they don't make a carpet like some other flowers would, but they're doing a pretty good job of uh, giving good coverage to the area now. So they'll probably, over time, really fill out as long as we keep getting a good amount of rain pretty critical to their development. Well, pretty much all plants need rain. Ain't none that don't. The uh, mountain bog gentian over here, while it doesn't seem to be growing at a rocket pace, seeing as it's only supposed to flower like in late fall, I think it's doing pretty good. Over here, now, we got dogwoods all over the place around here. Loads and loads of them. Yeah. Catch them before the. See, there's two in a row, one here and one up a little further. Um, let me see if I can zoom in on that. Yeah. So that dogwood there. Lots of them around. 40 or 50 of them within eyesight of the house, although they're not real easy to pick up on camera because, well, cameras aren't human eyes and they don't have the same level of perception of the same things. You see same things better and some things not as well. So, coming down over here, uh, we're about to have some of the blue irises pop up. You might remember last week I had the creeping phlox in focus. Well, the white irises, which are always the very, very, very first things to come up. For whatever reason, the genetics are that the white iris always comes up first. Doesn't stay around a very long, but it's the first one to blossom with all the irises every year without fail and uh, so what it'll it'll come up and it'll go away and other things will take its place all right we're going to walk along this edge try to zigzag our way down through here um apple tree is almost actually it just came to full bloom and passed through full bloom in one week 
and you might or might not see verbena on there. Let me see if I can zoom in on the apple tree actually. I'll come around and get a straight close up of it. But anyhow, there's a verbena. That's on the uphill side of the slope. There's some more over here. Now people say, why don't I mow all that down? Well, first and foremost, because my mower would fall off in the hole. <laughs> I don't take the care to wreck my mower and get it stuck in a hole trying to mow. It wouldn't work. And the other side of it is, it's just that there's so much garbage going on around here that I have to take care of that mowing the weeds is kind of really like 99 millionth place in the world right now. And these little onion flowers are kind of similar to the, to the blue onion flowers, only there's like 50 million of them down here. A couple thousand, I'm sure. They grow in here nice and thick. And uh, they're uh, probably not really easy to see on the camera either, I don't know. And then, of course, <laughs> there are some blue onion flowers in amongst them. You know, they get blue and white right there at the same time. Paper whites and jonquils are getting through their phases. Different ones that, even though they're arguably all related, they all come up at different times. See here, there's a bunch more orange cocoons over here. I mean, these have been some that's been around a long time. One, two, three. That one's one of the really old ones. More blue flowers, more onion flowers. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're just they're all over the place over here. And uh, now I'm looking forward to the gladiolas. They're uh, they may or may not bloom this year. They didn't bloom last year, but. Uh, Seems like they got a little tipped by frost. This thing hasn't opened up flower blossoms yet, but it's probably pretty close. Again, this thing will be a couple days of a brilliant cascade of the white flowers all over. The uh, catalpa hasn't even put on a leaf yet. Lots and lots of flowering plants over here that have either just emerged from the ground and like the purple cone flower, aka Echinacea, or they're still not even up. So there's a lot more flowers to go. I was uh, blessed to get another propane tank. $250 for a 250 gallon propane tank. It's up there until I can put it in place. So that's sitting there for the moment. Eventually my goal is to put it right over here. You see where that little water bird fountain is and a couple of cement blocks there. Just north of this power pole and west of this uh, uh, walnut. I go through there, I'm going to clean out a little spot between that and the anchor strap there and put a concrete pad in and put it right there. Then I'll have two propane tanks. And one will mostly serve the shop, but be an emergency backup for the house. And then of course the other will just be run for the house. Alright, sidestep from the flowers a moment. Uh, we de-leavened everything and the house and so oh by the way the oh yeah the cherries are already out and they're almost already fully bloomed uh i'll get to that in just a second though so yeah i uh cleaned this thing out put pulled about 50 60 pounds of dirt and gravel and rust out of the interior of that thing it's led a hard life oh well it is what it is. Um, haven't gotten a whole lot done this week on my uh, tooling. So I, I did do some deleavening of the place. That's why things are moved around differently. You notice that 
radios on top of the microwave and the speaker sideways and everything has been moved around. It's going to be moved around more. By next week it'll look different. I'm going to get in here. I welded some extra steel on this thing to enhance its strength and prepare it for the next steps of the development. And I just haven't gotten around to milling it true and clean and flat and everything. Um, this is just there as an elevator stop. It's like lifting it. I needed something to elevate the block and lift it and flatten it so that it would sit in like a parallel kind of formation. Over here I have a custom made as in, well, by me, uh, ball nose mill that I need to perfect a little better. That That's why it's over here so I can get in there and clean it up, true it up and get it in ideal working conditions. And then once that's done I'm going to use it to cut a radius on that tool so that I don't have a sharp edge on it and the weld point which would compromise some of its strength. Um, let me see, is there anything back here? Uh, I don't think so. I think I already reported that I got some more shower doors back here. If anybody's wondering all the eggs I eat, I save the boxes from the eggs. And all the uniform. I like keeping uniform boxes and stuff because I pretty much Generally speaking, I like to have uniform packages of various kinds around so that I can uh, um, make plans based on having some kind of boxing or container. It's like all the, the pickle jars I've got. I haven't even bought any more pickles in a while, but I've still got the jars so I can make pickles. Anyhow, so eventually I need to clean that out, put shelves in there. And that will help me get a lot of this cleaned up and get it off the ground. I think I mentioned already I got that new work tray. And since I have the torch system, I'm going to finish fixing that old work tray there that I've got. Clean it all off and repaint it and everything. Reminds me of a joke, repaint it out thinner. Anyhow, and of course the uh, onions over here and the uh, elephant garlic are doing as good as they've ever done, I suppose. Now over here, we have the uh, strand of verbena. Hopefully before too long, the uh, lentils will pop up out of here and start flowering. But all sorts of other things, like various forms of clovers are going to pop up. I see some of them already coming up. And of course the yellow coneflower, relative of the echinacea. Also, as I guess some might call it the golden clone, clone flower. My mom called it Mexican sombrero, but that's not his good name. And again, more uh, very vibrant verbena. Vibrant verbena. Very vibrant verbena. I guess you could say that many times fast. And super vibrant lilies that are spreading like wildfire, which is good. I'm happy for that. Uh, they, they've over quadrupled their size in coverage of the the colony is advancing itself, propagating, which is kind of what Yowie made them do. Anyhow, so yeah, the uh, tree is flowering, and I'm assuming to some small extent fruit is setting. I'd rather not set as many fruit, actually, because then I don't have to worry about thinning it. And going back to repaint the thinner. Anyhow, so over here, the uh, common blue uh, irises are propagating and flowering. Well, they'll, they'll be open soon. The grape hyacinth has exactly one flower left. The others have all finished. You can see the little stems. Now this is vetch. A little purplish fuchsia flowers on the vetch and then this is I don't know what kind of flower that is but anyhow it's just one of the many flowers around here um so the uh irises are you know getting along doing their thing this one over here is a little ahead of the rest of the blues it's getting along pretty good it may open up any day so yeah and then it middle of the last week this thing opened up and the grasshoppers or something's already eating on it 
but um, it'll fully open up over the next few days and see there's a bud that's already open so it'll get out and it'll start bursting forth with flowers and more of those lovely vetch flowers a lot of them in one place and again everywhere I had a large volume of vetch I went ahead and put in uh, lentils and then of course these flowers here that are whatever they're called try to get a close up of these again not knowing what they're called they're just you know, pretty flowers to me <laughs> I'm no botanist or horticulturalist or anything like that I'm just an idiot just a bunny rabbit I'm out here doing my thing new uh, canes for next year of the raspberries these have not flowered I thought they'd have flowered by now but uh, week on and they still haven't flowered I'd be really upset if they didn't flower this year especially since I added more triple superphosphate this thing is just starting to peek open its little bitty buds of green leaves it's probably a month or so before it will open up and flower I don't know I'm not an expert. I see it all the time and I don't record it. These are giant daylilies and they're doing good. Another little uh, Rose of Sharon right there. It's doing good. It flowered lovely last year. A couple other Rose of Sharons over here. Just about to step on one there. Break it off on the ground. That would be just bad. Uh, trip over all these uneven spots of the ground you can't see for all the grass growing up and uh, now I don't expect you to even know the difference if you saw one but I sprinkled that rice over here whether any of it germinates would be a miracle I'm sure especially since a lot of times companies irradiate food I think I see some rice grains I do I see rice grains out here some are even floating or sitting on top of stuff. Now whether they'll ever germinate, anybody's guess. But uh, anyhow, so there's rice grains all out through here. Def being defended by a small swarm of tadpoles. <laughs> Little army of froglets that are actually not paying any attention whatsoever to the either the rice or anything that would eat the rice like birds anything they're gonna run hide try not to die which I don't blame them so the peony now at this moment we have probably most of the stems that we're gonna have for the year two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen at the moment that's probably as many as we'll have this year 13 I'm guessing over here we'll walk straight into the sunlight which is a really bad idea I realize and we'll turn around and film it from the other direction anyhow we've got cherry flowers that are pretty near the middle of their bloom already if I'd have got a video of them in the middle of their bloom I mean, the peak of their bloom would have been better. Again, no clear evidence yet of the pinto beans popping up yet, but they probably will, some of them. Out here, I deliberately planted them in the thicket. And then, of course, the irises and the lilies and everything that are ground cover are doing their normal ground cover thing. That's where they belong, I guess. I got we made them. The tulips have not attempted to do anything other than put a leaf out or two so they're not changing much bridal wreath hasn't opened up yet but the baby's breath is pretty much always done and uh, the uh, these vetch are putting on some flowers too really pretty lots of flowers there not very big but still this uh i think what it is the bigger one's the female i think and the smaller is the male i could be wrong anyhow 
Could be that the male is the one that's opening the flowers first. I'm really not sure how that works. Seeing how these two hazelnuts are opening up pretty good. And they'll be hopefully covered in uh, little nuts pretty soon. And by fall, they'll be mature. Now those are so small, they're practically inedible. There's nearly nothing to them but shell. They would sprout, which is all they really need to do in nature. And as far as raising them for food, we'd have to get a different breed for food. Another giant uh, uh, lily, day lily that's doing good. Over here, this tree over here, the whole thing reason again is bringing it up. I think I did last week too, because it might be a relative of the hazelnut. I'm not for sure what it is. So this is the right one? No, it's not, it's not. That's a cherry, sorry. I'm <laughs> aiming the wrong tree. So this right here, Again, is the one I'm thinking might possibly be a relative of the hazelnut. Still too soon to find out until it does something other than... Because I don't think that... It's really young, and I don't think it's ever tried to flower before this year. I actually lopped it off at the ground once. But it came back from the stump. So, tough little booger. But then again, a lot of trees will do that. It's not like any one particular tree is... So super tough that it's better than the rest. Again, over here, the the cherry trees are just the ones that I've pruned and taken care of the most are really in full bloom and uh, really looking good. Hopefully, they will produce some fruit one of these days. Now, over here, there was nothing here last week, and here we've got our asparagus. And I put some fertilizer on it. I may put some more on it. So it's uh, looking pretty good. Eventually, like I say, hopefully I'll transplant it before it dies of old age. Again, more uh, cherry blossoms over here. Not as spectacular as the pink cherry blossoms that everybody talks about over in Japan and all that. But they're cherry blossoms all the same. They're just really tiny ones that are... <laughs> there are more flowers and smaller and more fruit and smaller. But it is what it is. It's a wild cherry. It's not tame. Not commercially raised. Good cherry wood though. If you're ever raising them for timber, wild cherries is good or better possibly than the tame cherries on the wood quality. They're all good wood. Don't get me wrong. It's not like one's bad and one's good. It's more like one's good and one's better. All right, so most of the plums have finished their blooming, primarily. Now, there's a few blossoms left, and they are kind of, well, that's a, not a, plum, a cherry plum, I mean plum blossom, anyhow. So, yeah, the plums have uh, blossomed. They're going into fruit setting stage, and uh, who knows how many we'll get. I got to keep looking at them and the cherries for tent maker caterpillars nests. So far I've only seen one, got rid of it right away. But you never know when you'll next see one. Neighbors are busy shooting, which is fine. Well, that about dogwood seems to either already be done flowering or, or it's just got its leaves coming out early or what, I'm not for sure. Uh, some of the white flowers down here, the jonquils or paper whites, are coming up right there. And uh, down here, creek's flowing along just fine. Mom always says she, we need to stock this thing in fish, and I'm like, well, if it were to A, not go dry, and B, not wash out every now and then, it'd be fine. It's a beautiful creek, crystal clear. And there's no agriculture per se up above us. I see a little fish in there right now, a little shad's minnow, something like that, whatever they are. Something lives in here, fish. And uh, lots of them. I think what they do is they bury themselves in the mud in the winter and then come out when it's warm enough. Anyhow, so. There's no 
industry. There's no real residents of much consequence up, up above us. Just empty wild woodlands. Sure, oh, there's bacteria and there's mold and spores of all sorts of kinds in there. I mean, that's all, <laughs> that's the planet. That's always going to happen. But all together, there's no, there's not a whole bunch of various pesticides and mRNA bioweapons or anything like that. It's just pretty much just uh, wild stuff. And, you know, not super badly. You know, like uh, there's no cattle pens or anything up above us. In fact, I doubt there's any cattle on that hill. It's all woods. So there's a little deer here and there. And a couple lizards and a couple bunny rabbits and a bunch of chipmunks and squirrels and birds. You know, just the normal things you'd find in nature. And while they do poop in the water a little bit, you just filter it and boil it and it's good. Other than that, still have a lot more I got to do down here. It may or may not be evident how much more I've got to do. And uh, There were some uh, thistles over here. I dug them out, fed them to the goats. First time I've ever seen a goat eat so much thistle. Usually they don't. But they were young and tender thistles, so I think that made a difference as to how much thistle they ate. Usually they won't touch a thistle or they'll maybe nibble at it and walk away, but they devoured six plants and uh, probably ate 25 pounds of thistle, so that's possibly a world record for goats because they usually don't like to eat the thistle at all, unless I spray it with that purple solvent. So this dogwood, we're looking at it, of course, from the bottom because, well, can't get up on top of it. But it's uh, one of many, many down through here, different sizes of them. Of course, here's the maypops. They're all coming along here. Um, so here, that's a, that's a mint right there. Along here again, I wanted to point out again the, uh, where are they? Um, uh, the, uh, yeah, tiger lily colony right here. And it was, you know, a deer came through here and bit the top off of one already. Poor thing. Down here, where there's nothing to scare them off, they come down through here and eat all my flowers. Makes me mad, but what can I do? Somewhere along here, there's some Jack and Paul and Trillium already coming up. Um, they may not be super obvious that I can find them in a hurry and film them video them in a day, but they'll be up pretty soon. They always are. Uh, one of these days, I'd like to do something about it, but right now, I just enjoy their presence because I think that they'd make a beautiful plant to sell if I had the opportunity to. Just I don't right now. So I'm not worried really about it. And, of course, our elderberries are still outliving the deer's assault. And, uh, Hopefully, maybe they'll make some fruit so they don't bite the flowers off. I don't know if the deer ate the verbena or if they just decided to quit flowering. But hey, okay, there's less heady of flowers this week than last. Uh, I see some trillium in here, I'm not too sure. Oh, here we go. Here's a jack in the pulpit. I already got a jack in the pulpit coming up. A nice little flower there. It's little compared to some of the bigger ones, but it's there. And then, uh, of course, it's still too soon for the the passion fruit, but uh, the mint's getting along. And then these various kinds of grass, like nuts edge and stuff, are coming up. There's water grasses. And uh, my uh, colony of poke is poking its head out, little stems. I figure between a month and two months from now it'll be ready to harvest when it's about between a foot and a half and two feet tall, something like that. And more baby pops. Pretty much that's about everything. I mean, again, the uh, 
area looks decapitated because of the stems falling over, but they'll grow back over and make a canopy there again like they always do. And then hopefully this grapevine, which it is putting on some buds, hopefully this year it'll go ahead and flower. It's been a couple years since it flowered. Could be the shock of being knocked down, I don't know. But hopefully it will. And I gotta get down here before the whole rest of the bank washes away. Between the stupid groundhogs digging holes in it and the flooding of the water. It was, it was literally three feet deep here one point the other day when it was floating down through here. It was ripping and snorting. So, yeah. When I say three feet, I mean where I was standing it was three feet deep. It was six or seven feet in some places in the creek. But uh, it went all the way across there to the far horizon back by the road. All the way to this bank. So it was up pretty good and rolling pretty fast. We got six, seven inches of rain that day. All in pretty quick succession. It was a new record for the day. Anyhow, and of course more cherries up here are blossoming. It'll maybe or maybe not set fruit. We'll see. I have yet to get a real harvest of cherries out of here. Just two or three cherries and that's it. So that's going to be it for this report. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'll just call it, pull it here. And we'll see, say more later.